Hey, Kate, welcome to Vivid Virtual Days. I can't hear you. I on mute. You caught me. Yes, I'm on mute. <laughs> You've been in the green room for a while, so that's why you're probably on mute. So thank you so much for joining us. I really enjoyed your session. Um, is there one key takeaway you like people to take from your session? Uh, one thing you could boil it down to to help people uh, with their efforts as well? Wow, just one thing. So that that's a little hard, just one thing. Yeah. Uh, but I can tell you that the SMAX or SMAX tool is really going to be a game changer in this space. You know, it's easy to configure. It's easy to maintain. Um, and it provides so much process out of the box for our customers um, that it really gives you a jump start on on a new or a modern enterprise service management solution. Very cool. So I did take some notes and I noticed that you mentioned that um, it's codeless. So it helps you to modify. So because it's codeless, I come from a functional testing background automation. People usually get freaked out because they like to tinker or to modify, or they think it's not hard to modify. So how customizable is the codeless uh, piece of uh, SMAX? Yeah, so there's a lot of things that you can do. It's really just drag and drop for you to create your processes or take the processes that already exist and maybe just enhance them a little bit. Um, you don't need to dig into the background. And as I mentioned in my video, you don't have to be a Java expert or things like that. It's it's really something that is easy enough for folks to configure that you will be able to maintain it and also be able to upgrade when new versions come out. Very cool. All right, so we have our first question. And the question is, how many developers do I need? How big of a team do you All need right. to actually implement this? Yeah. <laughs> Yes, so uh, yeah, you can have as many as you want, but really you only need a handful depending on your environment. You know, if you need separation of duties or things like that, you need two, three, maybe five, um, but it really doesn't take a lot of folks to maintain this tool. It's designed to really provide value and ease of use and not increase the number of folks that you need on staff. Very cool, so um, I, I, I I'm always intrigued when I see Max for some reason. I don't know anything about him other than what you mentioned about natural language. So how helpful is Max? Can you just tell us a little bit more about him, about the, the uh, yeah. automation piece? Yeah. Sure. So Max is, it's going to provide your end users almost a, a, a Google-like, I know Google's trademark too, uh, but a Google-like experience because you can imagine uh, the folks who are maybe not technical, they need answers, and they're going to type into a search box um, just something how they would phrase it to their neighbor in the next cube. And the beauty of that is that Max can understand that because of the artificial intelligence and can really point that end user very quickly into the solution that they need, whether it's a knowledge article or a catalog item or starting up a trouble ticket. So it really shortcuts a lot of what an end user needs to do. So it makes it very easy to adopt for your end users. Very cool. Okay, uh, we have another question. The user wants to know, is SMAX a fairly new solution? What is the current version? All right, excellent. So it is a, sort of a new version. It's about two years old. Um, we provide up, updates to the tool about every three months where we provide you know more enhancements or things that our customers have asked for. Um, but it's, as, it's essentially about two years old. So before it came out, what, was there a solution, another company that had a, a solution? Is this a totally unique take on uh, oh, on the oh, great. So now we get a history lesson. All right. So a history <laughs> lesson from uh, Microfocus, formerly known as HP. So a little bit of the background. We had, of course, Service Manager. That's mm -hmm. our. That's still there. It's a, it's a very stable, very uh, mature tool that's out there. You can make it do whatever you want it to do. Um, and then from that, we built uh, from scratch a tool called Service Anywhere. And then at some point we realized that really Service Anywhere wasn't flexible enough for what our customers needed. So then we moved into SMAX or SMAX. Very cool. So a user wants to know, how is SMAX sold? All right. So I'm assuming that's uh, about how the licenses are used. Yep. So what's really great about our licensing model is that you can have both named and concurrent users. So whoever's going to be in the tool working in it every day, or maybe you've got a second and third level folks, you can assign named users to, for example, the help desk folks, 
and then concurrent users so you can have those flexible licenses we usually go maybe a three to one to a five to one ratio on folks to use that shared license and then for your end users or people who might approve changes through that end user portal that i showed there's actually no charge for those folks so it's really just the agents named and concurrent whatever you need nice uh, another question from user they want to know what would you tell existing SM customers the value of SMAC? The value that I've that I've talked to a lot of customers and what they're interested in is really a lot about the artificial intelligence. That piece of it seems to resonate with a lot of folks. When we were down at Service Management World last month, had a lot of questions about the uh, the AI piece of it. So enabling your end users to have a better experience, a faster experience, a more direct experience. Um, has really been very popular with uh, the customers that we've spoken to. So AI tends to be a big buzzword in functional testing. Is this AI really delivering on the promise of AI that you've seen so far? You know, I think it is. Uh, yeah. Just from the, again, the demos that I've done and folks looking to see how, you know, Max interacts with them. Uh, yes, I think it has been a game changer and it is something that more and more customers are looking for. I guess I'm, I'm dating myself. I always think of Clippy for some reason when I think of these type of solutions, but I'm pretty sure it's yes. much smarter than Clippy was. So that's awesome. Yes. <laughs> all right, cool. Um, all right, next question from the user wants to know, how quickly can I get Smacks up and running? <clears throat> so you can get Smacks configured in probably two to three months. And I know that sounds crazy for those of us who have been in the service management space. Um, I hesitate to tell you how long I've been in it since the year 2000. Uh, so it, usually it's been years and years and months and months, uh, but with Smacks, it's really, you know, a couple of months can get you up and running. Awesome. All right, Kate. Getting a few more questions in. Just give me one second while my computer refreshes here. All right, so next question is... Is there a migration path from Service Manager to Smacks, and is it automated, automated or manual? All right, that's a great question and one we get quite often. So for that user who's using Service Manager, oh, you guys know you can make that thing dance. It's There's a lot of things that you can do. There is no, quote, migration path from Service Manager to Smacks. There are some things that you have in Service Manager that we can certainly reuse and we can port over. Um, but for the most part, you'll take a look at the, the latest, greatest processes that are in there, process designer, how the forms are built, things like that. Um, and you'll kind of start from there. So there's no real uh, migration for those of you who are former service manager folks where you know that the, the upgrade process, it's really separate, but there are things that we can reuse. Very cool. Uh, someone wants to know, can you speak to the SaaS solution piece of it? I think you said it's not available yet, or is it in beta? It's moments, yeah. It'll, <laughs> it is. It's something that's coming out this month, although this month is really quickly coming to a close. Yeah. Um, but MicroFocus is going to, going to be providing an environment, a SaaS environment. MicroFocus will host the solution for U.S. and Canada-based customers um, and make it available to... Uh, to really any customer that is interested in having your container and your application, your tenant kind of hosted, and then you, that's something you don't have to maintain on site. Um, but there's more information coming out just about every week from MicroFocus um, that can provide more information about where they are in that process. So you did mention Kubernetes, people do get freaked out. Uh, how technical, if people miss that part, how technical do you need to be to actually get up with running with the solution? Yeah, that's the beauty of this. When it comes to the containers and Kubernetes, you know, there's a little prep work you have to do, but it's almost, almost as simple <laughs> as pressing a button. And then it goes out and builds the container deployment foundation and then builds the tenants. And then you kind of start from there, but it's, it's not heavy lifting. You don't have to be technical. <clears throat> so, excuse me. Um, so it's pretty simple to do. Now, I'm sure people have a lot of systems that they like to integrate with. How is it to integrate with other systems? Is it, is it pretty uh, easy to integrate? Uh, yes, you can integrate. We use uh, REST API to integrate. And then nice. for the folks who are still vintage using the MicroFocus Connected product, that's still out there. <laughs> but for the most part, it's the REST APIs. Very cool. All 
All right, next question. User wants to know, uh, can I start, or do you know, can I start on-premise and then migrate to the SaaS solution? You absolutely can. So that's a really great way of getting up and running, having uh, maybe a sandbox for people to play with it a little bit, see what it's all about. And you can even start to the point of building out your configuration on premise. And then when you're ready, then move that tenant up to SaaS or move it up to the cloud. Very flexible. You're just migrating tenants. Uh, it's not heavy lifting. I always ask this about software. I don't know why. Um, I, I assume it has a lot of features. Are there any specific features in Smacks that you think people don't utilize enough of or don't know that it can actually do to help them? Yes, my favorite part are is really the hot topic analytics. Because of my background, I was previously a help desk manager and creating reports and understanding why are people calling in? Lord, I'd have to go ask you know my 50 odd help desk people, why is somebody calling? Why is somebody calling? Because it was really difficult to understand you know what's coming in. But with that hot topic analytics that I showed in the demo, it you, you look at a screen and you say, oh my gosh, here's what's going on in my environment. And it's very simple to you know, create a master ticket from that a master incident or create a problem ticket or or anything like that. And it's a great dashboard for maybe supervisors and managers as well to understand what's going on in your environment. So it seems like it really does streamline the process. Is there any like numbers you can give like a percentage of time it would save a company implementing it uh, in general or anything like that? Oh. I do have that. I don't have really? it at the top of my head. <laughs> um, it is something that we have looked at to make uh, make it streamlined, but we do offer an ROI process so we can help you with ROI to understand how much time it will save you, what kind of money it's going to save you. Um, but there is an ROI that we can do with our customers. Very nice. Okay, next question. Oh, that's one good thing about this being on demand. If you send that to me, I can actually add it to the site so okay. people can take a look if you want. Will do. So, very cool. All right, next question. Are the capabilities the same on both on-prem and SaaS? I know you said it's a good way to start, but if someone does start, is there anything they need to be aware of that it's going to go away when you go to SaaS? Not at all. It's one and the same, so it makes it really simple to move around to different environments. Awesome. Okay. All right, Kate, just waiting for a few more questions to come in. As I mentioned, it's easy to get your questions in. Just go to slido.com and type in Vivid ITOM to get your questions in. All right, can you, um, it's a good question. Let me bring it in on the slide here. Can you brand the solution? You absolutely can. So what I showed in the demo was really just vanilla out of the box, like the end user portal. So you can change the background. You can change the colors, the logos, things like that are all very flexible to be swapped out. So it would be very specific to your company. And even if you had maybe multiple companies that you supported, people wanted to see their own flavor or their own brand on it, you could make those multiple end user portals that all report back to the same Smacks backend. Great, okay, another question they wanna know. <clears throat> Do we have to have service management experience for the solution? Experience. So not sure what experience would be, um, <clears throat> but the beauty of what we provide with Smacks is a lot of what you need is already out of the box. So if you don't have maybe great processes defined, that's mm -hmm. already provided for you because Microfocus has been in the business for a very long time. We've got a number of customers who are very happy to tell us you know, their opinions, how it should work. We've got a lot of ITIL folks. So we've built a lot of those processes out of the box. I usually say in my demos, we've got the 80-20 rule. So we've built about 80% of what you need, <laughs> really 80 to 90 now nice. with Smacks. And so you just have to look at that other 10% that's maybe very particular to your company that we need to add in. Right, cool. so this is a question that was asked last time uh, by, to, <laughs> to another speaker. I guess ServiceNow is a big competitor, so they want to know. Uh, <laughs> Can Smacks be the product to bring back customers that move to service now? I really do think it can be. We've, we have a lot of customers now who are looking around. They've looked at ServiceNow. ServiceNow, great product, very um, innovative in their world, uh, but can also be very complex. And you need just a whole stable of people to maintain it. <clears throat> so 
usually about three years, people are looking around to see, okay, what else is out there? And I think Smacks is a great product to now turn around and look out for ease of use, ease of configuration, ease of maintaining. Um, again, you, you're able to keep up with the most recent versions of the products, uh, releases of the product, because we make it so simple for you to upgrade. And it's not upgrade, sorry, it's update. New terminology. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Another question they want to know. Value first. Can you share more about this offering? How long is it? Who is evolved from the customer side? Sure. So value first is really just helping you. Instead of us coming in and saying, hey, what do you need? Right. And then just saying, okay, we'll write it out then and we'll do whatever you want to do. Um, you know, we're going to help maybe challenge you a little bit and make sure that this is the right way for you to go when you're looking at <clears throat> maybe moving to a new tool and what functionality do you need and what reporting do you need and things like that. So we're going to help you really move your product into something that's more um, aligning with your business, your company's business goals. And the people are involved are, <clears throat> we, we love it when executives are involved because that helps the adoption of the tool. So uh, anyway, from any, any level from your executives down to the SMEs can be involved in this process so we can get you the best information and provide you a really rock solid solution. I think part of the question was how long does it take? Yes. Is that the other part of that question? Yeah. <clears throat> kind of depends. <laughs> it depends <laughs> on how in depth that you want. Um, so it's really up to you to um, determine how much do you need and then we'll make a decision or, or, or tell you how long it's gonna take us to get you to that place. Great. So if someone's watching this and I'm like, I wonder if this will be is the right fit for my company. Are there any key indicators or key issues they may be dealing with that makes Smacks a great solution for them? Sure. If you are ready to move to a tool that you can update easily, that you can keep uh, on target with the most recent uh, functionality that's out there, whatever's going to benefit you the most, not and just something that's easy to maintain. And it's almost a set it and forget it kind of product. So nice. <clears throat> those folks who are just ready to move into something that's a little more streamlined and not have all the craziness that you might have had and, you know, everything to everybody back in the day when we were building some of the other tools. So just to make it easier for you. Very cool. I know a lot of times people buy tools, but they don't get training. So this next question, but it sounds easy, like you don't need training, but we'll find out. Does your company offer training? and or post-implementation support? We absolutely do. So we can do, let's say that you engage us to um, bring Smacks into your world and do some configurations. At that point, we can do a train the trainer so we can show you what we have developed for your tool and you, you can maintain it from there if you want to. We also have our managed services, our first call. So we can help you in that aspect as well. So if you have trouble with the tool, we're your first line of contact whether it be uh, you know, opening up a trouble ticket with Microfocus or maybe you need some help in the consulting world. Um, so we can help you with all of that. And now I've forgotten the question. <laughs> yeah, just in general, do you offer support or um, implementation oh. support or training? Yes and yes. Right. <laughs> and yes. <laughs> yeah, and Microfocus also offers training as well. There's some online training or some um, instructor-led classes for the product as well. Very cool. Right, kid, those are all the questions we have, but before we go, any right. last words of wisdom or anything you want people to take away uh, to help them in 2020? Uh, so it's really maybe 2020 is your year to get out of the twilight zone and move <laughs> into just a really current enterprise service management tool. Smacks can fit the bill for most every customer that's out there. So take a look either at our website or through the Microfocus website. And if you have any questions, let us know. Awesome. Thanks again for contributing to Vivid ITOM Virtual Days. Really appreciate it. Really great session. So thanks so much, Kate. Thank you. All right. Cheers. Cheers.